Good morning, boys and girls. This week I'm going to read a book to you called Red Bird at Rockefeller Center by Peter Maloney and Felicia Zakowskis. This was a book signed and given to my son from the authors. There once was a tree of a height to astound that people could see for miles around. It towered above the house of a lady who found it too tall and overly shady. It's crowding our yard, she cried out loud. There's only one way it could make us all proud. Rockefeller Center could use a big spruce. Our tree would be perfect for their Christmas use. Katie tried her best to change her mom's mind. To chop down this tree would be very unkind. There's chirping and tweeting and whistling within. I'm sure there are birds living out on a limb. About such creatures, I don't give a pittance. That tree is going, and I say good riddance. What do I care for a dumb bird or two? I'd rather have a beautiful view. The next day, a man in a truck pulled in front, and eyeing the tree, he let out a grunt. He drew back his axe and gave it a whack, and up at the tip, a little egg cracked. When the tree hit the ground, it rattled the street, and after it crashed, Katie heard a small tweet. She spotted a nest and the tiniest red thing. My goodness, she cried, I think it's a fledgling. But the driver worked fast, and the next thing Kate knew, the tree, truck, and redbird had vanished from view. They sped through the snow under the river. The driver had something he had to deliver. That thousand-foot spruce, that giant green tree, was scheduled to be in the city by three. The tree was put up before you could wink next to that world-famous ice skating rink. It reached toward the heavens, then started to taper. Its tip was as high as the tallest skyscraper. The ladies' auxiliary all worked together and decked out the tree with birds of a feather. Someone had gotten it into her head to fill up the tree with birds that were red. The tree was a beauty, the best one in years, and all would agree it was worthy of cheers. But while skaters went round gliding and falling, no one could hear a small red bird calling. I say, come on, please, someone open your beak. A thousand red birds and not one who will speak? Can't anyone help me? I'm so far from home. Why must you all make me feel so alone? But no bird responded. They weren't just bluffing. How could they speak? They were nothing but stuffing. The days till Christmas flew by without stopping, in a flurry of snowflakes and holiday shopping. The seasons were joyous. The whole world seemed glad, except for two hearts that were sadder than sad. Let go of that tree, Kate. It's gone, and that's that. There's nothing to do, dear. It's not coming back. Why must you have these Christmas time blues? Good heavens, our tree was just shown on the news. Mother, believe me, there's life in that tree. I tell you I'm certain I heard a bird plea. I've got it. I'll prove it. I know what we'll do. We'll visit that tree up on Fifth Avenue. I'll show you those birds are not living at all. They're no more alive than a Christmas tree ball. So they went and they waited and heard not a peep. Wouldn't you know it? Red Bird was asleep. I'm sorry, my darling. It's time you faced facts. Now let's do some shopping at bird darts and sacks. We'll get a few things, and then we should leave. It's getting much later, and it is Christmas Eve. They shopped for an hour, and then they departed. Katie cried out, I'm so broken hearted. Now who can explain how snowflakes and tears 
falling together could awaken deaf ears. Sometimes two things together can do something that makes the impossible true. Each snowflake and tear awakened a bird, and slowly but surely, a thousand wings stirred. The tree was a twitter, a chorus of peeping. They'd all come alive as if waking from sleeping. They wanted to help, and one had a plan. He said to Redbird, we'll all lend a hand. Tonight's Christmas Eve. We've got you a gift. We'll help you get home. We'll give you a lift. Then all of the birds gripped the limbs where they perched, and beating their wings, the mighty tree lurched. It rose from its stand like a giant green rocket. Thank goodness that no one had bothered to lock it. The tree weighed a ton, but flapping together, the birds all agreed it was light as a feather. Now that we're airborne and high in the sky, please tell us, Redbird, just where should we fly? I'm hearing a voice inside of my head. I think it's a prayer being said in a bed. And though I can't give a street name or address, let's follow that voice. Let's keep flying west. So while mothers and fathers and children all snored, one thousand red birds flew westward and soared. The tree crossed the sky, then made a soft landing in the very same spot where it used to be standing. When Katie awoke at quarter past dawn, there was more than fresh snow out there on the lawn. Where once had been a sad vacancy, now again stood Katie's favorite old tree. Mother, come quickly, get out of your bed. We've got a few guests who will have to be fed. Her mother blinked twice, then swallowed real hard. She said, that darn tree must be long in our yard. And I'm happy to say we've got what we need, a thousand pound sack of red bird bird seed. It wasn't a gift I expected at all, but that Santa Claus, he's right on the ball. Their Christmas was joyous, and Kate summed it up while sipping eggnog from her favorite cup. A white Christmas is lovely, but this year instead, I'm so very happy our Christmas turned red. And that's the story, Red Bird at Rockefeller Center.